Hello and welcome to part 4 of this series on sculpting the king of the rusted crown. First of all, thank you for watching and I'd like to invite you to take a look at my Patreon page. There's a link in the description below. If you'd like to learn how to sculpt or perhaps pick up a cast or two, there might be something there for you. I have several different pledge levels and if you'd like, we can have a chat about a sculpture you're working on or on sculpture or the arts in general. Please check it out, there's a link in the description below. First off, I want to apologize for taking a while in getting the next part of this series out. For the few of you that watch, thank you mom and dad and Hubert. The time got very busy in the studio. I'm responsible for a lot of things in the studio at the moment, taking, taking care of stuff with, together with the studio assistants. This means ordering materials, making sure everything is ready for the end of the year when the students make molds of the work they've done. This is a bit of an undertaking and this is the first time I'm doing it, so getting everything ready probably took a bit more effort than it really, really should or needed to, but I'm sure next time around things will go a little smoother. In addition to that, we had the final critiques and the graduation ceremony, and I need to prepare things for the summer workshop as well in July. So there's a lot of stuff going on here at the end of the year, but I'd rather be busy than have nothing to do, so it's all good. Okay, so on to the sculpting. In this episode, I've included three days instead of two, and here's why. As everything gets closer and closer, things tend to slow down a lot. The pieces of clay get smaller and smaller as my decisions get smaller and smaller. And this is an interesting point, actually. The pieces of clay you put on should be of the same size as the decision that you make. My proportions, overall heights and widths and shapes are more or less in place. But as you can see, all my transitions are, are still super deep. And it's important to note that they're not, they're not sharp. I haven't made them sharp, I've made them extra deep and, and slightly too wide also. So at this stage, it's time to slowly start filling in the spaces in between my shape. I creep up on this because if I take it very slow, I can adjust the shapes as I approach my final transition. If I fill in the gaps too quickly, I tend to end up with generalized shapes that are more or less like my model, but they lack total accuracy. It's hard to gauge the accurate shapes when they have big gaps in between them, so as I slowly get closer to them, looking like my model, I can see a lot easier where changes need to happen. It's the same principle I do my best to employ all the time while sculpting. Work very slow from generalized to specific. So for the next episodes, I'll probably include three days per episode, making for fewer total episodes and making sure there is not too much boring stuff to watch. There's a lot of the work that does very little visually at this stage, yet it's so important for the final result I think that I will try and include some of it, but a lot of it is just very hard to see, so it doesn't need to be included. So a lot of people fill in these the gaps in between my forms these wide big transitions, they fill them in super fast, or they block in the figure too quickly, or work too fast in general. And when you do that, you tend to get stuck, and you end up chasing your work in a circle forever, especially when you have a timeline. You end up chasing your work for however long you have time for, and you never really improve upon it. I think much of the frustration that comes with this art form comes from this. Uh, lack of process and, and patience, which luckily means that it's easy to solve as well, of course, which should come as a relief to anybody who is experiencing this. So sculpting, like anything else in life, take a bit of discipline. Understanding this and, and getting in the habit of doing this was, for me, one of, one of my biggest hurdles, I think. Rob, my teacher, described it very well to me once, saying that if we could uh, have a linear process, it would be ideal, we would never have to go back and forth. Of course, this might very well be impossible, and certainly it seems so for me, but in essence, I suppose it means that we want to rather take it very slow and purposeful, instead of rushing into it and then having to, to backstep a lot. Imagine if you were climbing a hill and you had to walk up to the middle of the hill, then back again, then back up three quarters of the way, then back a little bit again, then back up to three quarters, and then back again. It would become very frustrating, you would never reach the summit. And I guess sculpture, in a way, is like this. 
walking up and down gets us in great shape however so hopefully after enough time up and down we can start getting straight sprinting straight to the top of the mountain without having to turn around as much so essentially I guess this means you know practicing makes the process go a little bit easier leading to less frustration and less back treading okay so back to what is happening on screen a little bit as I slowly come closer to the surface things reveal themselves to me and I resculpt or redesign a lot of the shapes that were already in there at this stage it's very easy and almost natural to do this everyone's process is a little bit different of course but I've found that this way of doing things kind of solves every issue for me as they come up which feels quite natural perhaps this method We'll do the same for you, who knows? I certainly hope we can help you a little bit, if nothing else. I use a mix of tools at this stage as well. The face is very small, so when I work on the portrait I use smaller wooden tools, or if I'm blocking it in I just use my, my fingers. On the body there's still a lot of work being done using my hands, and my big wood tool, and I'd probably use the big wood tool for most of it. But I've also started using rake tools at this stage and I find that these clean up the surface real nice and fast and they're, they're really perfect at this point when I'm trying to get a better look at my sculpture so I can more easily define what needs to be changed or what needs to be done so that it can more closely resemble my model. It's important to note, however, that I do not let the rake tools solve my problems. If there is an issue with a sharp transition, I will fill it in with more clay. If I have a sharp high point in a form, I solve it by adding clay to either side of that high point. I never rake down my high points as this flattens out my sculpture, and I never rake the transition as this just makes them deeper. So the, so the rake is really not a solution. I think a lot of people use it for solving a lot of their issues where the real solution is actually just adding clay. I will also not rake my final surface, and a lot of people do this, and it's fine of course, it looks good, I think. It was a bit of a trend for a while, but you know. The surface that I'll end up going for is one that will have more of what I feel is a springy quality of flesh. And I'll show you how I achieve that in a later video when the sculpture is a bit further along. I have a video on tools describing all of them, so if you want to take a closer look at that, there's a link in the top right corner of, to that video right here. This episode also contains a lot of work on the portrait, and while the body has progressed into the next stage somewhat, the head and the arms are still being blocked in. I want to get the head up to volume before pushing the arms ahead, as in this case the arms needs to work with the head, and therefore the full dimensions of the head need to be up there before I ever start sculpting the arms. The profile view of the portrait, as you can probably see, is more or less established, all the heights and depths on the portraits are there. Now the challenge is to build out the width. Too many times I've done this too quickly and built myself into trouble. It's way easier to adjust heights and depths of the features before reaching the overall width. In a way, I'm almost looking for a good impression of my model's face from, from the side view, but with very accurate proportions. Then I can sculpt out the width. But, like with the gaps in between the forms, I very slowly approach my width, so that I can make adjustments as I go along, while it's still easy to make them. This also allows me a shift in tempo and focus from time to time, which I really like. Of course, the whole sculpture needs to work together, and that's what all the stepping back is for. I've edited that out for you guys, not to bore you so much. But as I'm blocking in the head and arms, I'm refining shapes and starting the modeling process on the body, I find that it's quite nice to work on blocking something else in at the same time. The portrait and the arms and the hands at some point. This helps me from, from getting bored. Not only do I work on what I think needs to be worked on, but I can also work on what I feel like working on. If I get tired of one thing, I can change gears 
and work in a very different way on something else. But at the end of the day, it all serves the end goal and moves the sculpture closer towards completion. You can probably also notice that I do my very best to break the sculpture down into as many shapes as possible. For example, in the neck area around the back of the head, this area appears a lot smoother on the My Model than what I've blocked it in, and I'll fill these gaps in later in the process. I just find that doing it this way helps me judge the larger space, the larger spaces, the larger lengths and heights and widths, and a lot of the stuff I find I will lose later on anyway when I model. But part of it will still be there, almost giving the sculpture a sense of having something internal. And I find that the result is very realistic. Though it does look a bit of extreme at the moment for sure. Which is fine, it's all part of the process. Bigger chunks of clay would also have been a bit harder to edit as and if I need to move or change something, which I always do, I am very well set up here to make small decisions instead of one big one. Several smaller decisions are almost always preferable, I find, especially if the answer is hard to find, which it tends to be. At some point you can, you know, at some point as you get better at sculpting, you can get the larger things down fairly accurately and the adjustments become smaller. And I find that this method of sculpting suits suits this very very well speaking of process it's very hard for me doing these videos to define each step i wish i could and i think it would have been a lot easier to follow probably but at the same time it would have been deceiving to you as the viewer and as it's not really the way i sculpt the steps do really blend together the design of my shapes is not something I deal with all at once, for example. It kind of evolves as the sculpture evolves. So while I probably could have made some easy to follow steps, it's really not representative of the way that I sculpt, or the way that I want to sculpt. I have a few rules and things that I hold on to, like the width of my pelvis and my center line or in the portrait, my center line and my profile, the heights and depths on my profile. But everything else evolves slowly around this and the steps kind of blend together. At the same time, this is a lot more methodical than I sculpted before I learned how to sculpt this way. But I vastly prefer this way of sculpting and I think the results speak for themselves, hopefully. Thank you for watching, if you liked what you saw, please click the thumbs up and share with your friends. Sharing the video will help me out a lot. Subscribe if you want to see more and click the little bell for notifications so you'll never miss a video. I try to upload every week and sometimes twice a week. I'd also like you to take a look at my Patreon page, there's a link in the description below. If you would like to learn how I sculpt or perhaps pick up a cast or two, there might be something there for you. Thank you for watching and I hope to see you in the next one.